Okay, this is uh, kind of the first example of a series of shiny applications. This is probably the first one you'll see since the binomial is something we learned early on. Um, the first example of random variable applications where essentially we just focus on a single random variable. We allow you to play with it. Um, so you play with these parameters over here and you see how the, the graph changes. And I think that gives you, helps to give you good intuition as to like, um, how the distribution works, like what's going on. We, you know, we'll, we'll talk through it here. Um, just, to, you know, understand the story of it more. Understand if it's helpful to work with these distributions if you kind of know what's going on. So I think these, these are good for building intuition. Um, so what's going on here, and a similar setup to the rest of the videos, I have the, you know, this is the binomial. I have a, a box of parameters that I'm going to set, and based on these parameters, I'm going to make a plot on the right. So this first parameter is number of draws, okay? Number of draws, actually, you know, first we'll talk about N and P. These are the parameters of a binomial that we're going to call X here. So N, you know, here's 10. We It's it's 10 automatically updates. So we have 10 as N, as N and 1 half as P. So this is our random variable X. And then we plot, we decide how many draws we plot with this tab. So in this case, we're drawing 100 times from this distribution and we're plotting them on this graph. Um, for now, to start, we're going to just max out the number of draws at 1,000, so we get a nice full graph, right? 1,000 draws from, from this distribution. Okay, so now uh, think about uh, changing uh, sort of the parameters. So we have, remember, the story of binomials, we have n independent trials. Each trial has either, it's either a success or a failure, and they're independent with probability p of success. So here, basically, you can think of this as flipping, since p equals 1 half, you think of flipping a fair coin n times, 10 times, and uh, counting the number of heads. So it kind of makes sense that this is centered around 5, right? We actually, we know that the mean of a binomial is n times p, or, or in this case, 10 times 1 half is, is 5, so it makes sense it's around 5. And it makes sense that it's kind of symmetric, right? The minimum it could be is 0, we could get 0 heads. Maximum it could be is 10, we could get 10 equals n heads. Okay, so how is this going to change as we, as we mess around with p? Well, if P is large, right, it should make sense that the distribution is kind of clumped up on the right side, that is skewed skewed left, um, because it's kind of bumped up along the, this 10. Because if we have a higher probability of success each time, we're, we're going to see more successes on average. So if I increase P to be really high, P to be 0.9, um, you can see that we went from like kind of clumped around the middle to really bumped up against this 10. So a lot of times where we got 10 successes, you know, a lot of times we got 9 successes. Um, et cetera, et cetera. It makes sense that 9 is the kind of the most common, right? Because we have 0.9 times 10 for the mean is, is 9. So that's, that makes sense. Um, and we can also, whenever we want to like stop and sample a couple times, we can just hit go and kind of see how we randomly get different samples. Likewise, you know, if P goes all the way to, to 0.1 or point, you know, a very small value, it's going to clump up along the left side. Let's think about uh, sort of this extreme value. So here I set P equal to 1 and I get this kind of unintelligible graph. This is just our kind of not knowing how to handle what's going on. The reason being is because if we have a binomial 10-1, that's kind of degenerate, right? This all We're always going to have a success, so it's not random. We just have 10. It's always 10. X is always 10. So R here is trying to plot one point. That's why it looks like this. But the point is it's, it's always 10. Similarly, if we set P equal to 0, um, this actually looks a little better. Here, uh, we're always going to get 0, right? Because the probability of success is 0 on each trial. So it's, you know we, we see that it's 0 here. Um, and similarly, you know, we'll, we'll move P back to a more neutral one half. If we increase N, you know, to 30, then the mean goes to 15, right? We're centered around 15, you know, if we change N to 1. Now we, like, have a coin flip. About half the time it's it's here. About half the time it's here. And that's that kind of is, is what happens when we change N. And finally, uh, probably the least applicable for this type of theoretical uh, book is that if we decrease the number of draws and we keep sampling, you'll see there's a lot of variability in the graphs, right? Because we have such a small sample size. Whereas if we, you know, max out the number of draws over here, we get much less variability. Um, so I think that's interesting just in terms of, of sampling.